What's up, YouTube? Uh, Fino here. Today, I got something to show off to you guys. I uh, split the finals of a pro quest and got a gold foil. So we are going to be opening this up today. But before we get to that, uh, I just want to talk about something real quick. So I ended up playing uh, Dromai at the pro quest. And up until the finals where we ended up splitting, I actually went undefeated with this. It was uh, pretty good into the field, but I was uh, doing something kind of weird. I was playing a bit of a crackhead list that I threw together the night before coming. I was actually on uh, Royal Dromai. I grossly underestimated how good this card was. I uh, I thought about this when it, the set first release, being like, oh, that's cute. Maybe this is an interesting gimmick to do with her. Uh, I didn't th realize just how good it really was. So uh, let me run through some examples and kind of explain uh, what made this so good. So you get to start the game with the gold, as the card says. And uh, what it allows you to do is on the first turn of the game, going first or second, it doesn't matter, uh, we can use this gold to kind of get around some of the problems that we typically have with Dromai, such as drawing a cursed all-dragon hand. This can cost you games. This cost me a game at a uh, the calling at Charlotte. I opened the All Dragon Hand in uh, one of my games, and I just couldn't do anything and lost. I ended up doing this in another game as well, and I had to crack my Mage Master boots just to make an Ash and play the game. But in some matches, you're like against Guardian, you just can't crack your Mage Masters, or the game ends because of that instead. Uh, so what the uh, gold lets us do is we can go turn one, crack our gold. And then we pitch two dragons into it, making two ash, and drawing a card. Now, generally, you, you kind of play this mini game when you're playing Dromai uh, of making the ash all game and kind of fighting with your own deck. And maybe you have to make plays that make it go down to zero ash. And then you can end up drawing a hand that costs you the game after that. But it was like your only play. By Doing this, it puts us ahead on Ash, so we don't really have to focus on doing that anymore throughout the game. We're just... We started the game with Ash. We can actually just play the game untethered now. And then, uh, something else cool that it does is now that we're at this point, our first red that we pitch after this is going to be worth three resources. So we can even just play a three-cost dragon uh, for just one pitch, one single red pitch. Neutral on Ash, which usually these are going to cost you an Ash... And even if it's not one of these, you can have things that are very reminiscent of Prism of like a double aura turn of, you know, we crack our gold, make our ash, and then just end the turn with two dragons. It's very similar to like a Prism double aura turn. And you just pass, draw up, and you're just like, you have to deal with this now. Have fun dealing with my dragons, and now you're not going to punch me in the face, so I'm just going to keep my grip and then just come at you again and just kind of rinse and repeat and do this every round of the game. Uh, very, very powerful. And again, it just lets you play your deck without worrying about your deck restrictions because the, the whole pitching reds to play the game thing is such a big restriction and not having to worry about that from the outset, devaluing your ash over the course of the game because sometimes the, the, the ash can be worth a full card out of you. Well, if that's the case, we're getting two ash for essentially one card because we're rebating one of the cards by drawing with the gold. So if an ash is worth a full card at points in the game, we just got a free card essentially out of the deal there. Um, and yeah, it, uh, it also has some other cute things that you can do. Like you can add uh, cash into the deck. Uh, I'm not sure if I like that yet. It's it's cute and all. The thing is like you're, you're, if you're playing more than one, the extra copies can be dead. And I generally like actually just cracking the, the gold on turn one when I am doing this. But maybe that's something like, okay, you play it into all matches and in a matchup that you don't particularly care about making the Ash early, like, say, Icelander or something like that. You just play this for value later on because you're just not going to dedicate another slot to equipment or something for a different helmet. Um, but yeah. Uh, Royal Dromai? It's real. I underestimated it. I can't believe how good it was. Um, really makes the... It makes the deck feel like it's almost complete because it kind of had a feeling before this set that it was just missing something that wasn't a complete deck and it, it really does feel like it, it's a cohesive strategy now and I'm not fighting my own deck but enough of that this is what you guys are really here for I know uh 
been debating if I even wanted to open this for a couple days now or just sell it sealed, but uh, people convinced me to just open it up. So let's see what we get. Probably going to be uh, Luminaris since it's me. What do you guys think? What do you think it is? Probably, probably uh, Code of Frost knowing me actually because I'm unlucky. The other side. Ooh, that's a good one. Let's see if we can get a good look at it on the camera. I'm going to turn the light off on this. Or, or turn it up higher. A professional YouTuber man. It's picking up. All right. Yeah, if anyone wants this. I don't. I, I want dollar dues. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let me know if you guys want this. Uh, again, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all the support I've been getting, uh, trying to get back into doing YouTube content and stuff. Um, once the calling is over, I'm planning on doing a Dromai primer, so stick around for that. And yeah, thanks for watching. Peace.